Welcome back. My name is Gerline, and I am a mentor at McMaster Start Coding. In lesson 5 today, we will explore some advanced picture and animation techniques. We will learn how to clip and subtract, and we will learn how to achieve repetitive motion. We will rely on knowledge from lessons 1 to 4, but if you need a quick refresher, you are welcome to ask a mentor for help. Let's get started. Just like in lessons 1 to 4, we're going to head to MacOutreach.rocks and we're going to log in using our username and our password. Be sure to use capitals wherever you need them. For lesson 5, we're going to be working in the animation slots. So make sure you have the little comic strip selected and then head to any number slot you'd like. Today, I'm just going to stay in slot number 0. I have some code here that I've pre-prepared for the lesson. All of this code uses knowledge that we've learned in lessons 1 to 4, but let's do a quick overview. So the first thing I have here is my shapes model equals and then a set of empty square brackets. Because my square brackets are empty, when I click compile, I get no output or I get an empty output. The next thing I have here is a polygon. This polygon is made up of a bunch of points and this polygon is filled white. We've also named our polygon shirt. If you are unfamiliar with the polygon or you don't remember how to make it, always remember that we have a shape creator tool that can help you make whatever shape you want. And specifically, we have a polygon maker tool down here. Back to the animation slot, we have one more thing here, and that is a group called stripes. This group is made up of a bunch of rectangles with alternating colors. To get a better idea of how our shirt polygon and our stripes group look, Let's put them both in our My Shapes model. As we can see now, our stripes group looks like stripes and our shirt polygon is in the shape of a shirt. Now, let's try to create a striped shirt. One way we could do this is by using a bunch of rectangles and lining them up perfectly with the shirt. That might get a little complicated though in areas like here. Also, that might get very tedious. We have a tool called clipping that can make this process a lot easier. Clipping will allow us to choose which part of a shape we would like to keep. So here, let's try to clip the shape of a shirt from the stripes group. We will do that by leaving our stripes here and then underneath that, putting a forward pipe symbol and writing clip. And then in brackets, we have to specify the shape that we would like to clip. Since our polygon is called shirt, we can just clip shirt from our stripes group. Let's click compile, and as you can see, now we've clipped the shape of the shirt polygon from the stripes group, and we've created a striped shirt. Time for challenge number one. Your challenge is to create a moon with craters. Your moon should look like the first image before you use clipping to make it look like the second image. Keep in mind that your moons don't have to look exactly like this. Just make sure that the use of the clipping tool is evident. Pause the video now and come back once you've attempted the challenge so that we can go over the solution and the next part of the lesson. Here's how I did it. I started off with a group called Moon, and this group is made up of a white circle with a radius of 30, and then it calls on another group called Craters. Craters is a group that's made up of three gray circles. Then, I called my Moon group inside of my My Shapes model. I also added a big rectangle in the background and made it black. I went to my creators group, clicked enter, and then wrote clip, and then specified the shape that I wanted to clip. Since my moon is made up of a white circle, I knew that I wanted to clip a circle with a radius of 30. So I wrote circle 30, and then I had to specify the color of the circle I want to clip. The color doesn't matter because I'm just specifying the shape that I want to clip. So I could write red and then click compile. And as you can see, I was able to clip the craters to the border of the moon. Now that we're comfortable with the clipping tool, let's learn how to use the subtract tool. The subtract tool is kind of like the opposite of the clipping tool. The clipping tool allows us to choose which part of our shape we would like to keep. The subtract tool allows us to choose which part we'd like to get rid of. So here, back to our shirt example, let's use the subtract tool to try to create a hole in the shirt for the neck. What we're going to do is click enter and then use the forward pipe symbol and this time write subtract. 
then in brackets, again, we need to specify the shape that we want to subtract. So here, maybe an oval would be a good shape for the neck hole. We'll try dimensions of 15 and 10, then we need to specify the color of the oval. Instead of specifying color, we could also write ghost. What this means is that our shape isn't filled a certain color, it's just see-through. And since color doesn't matter, we could just leave it as a translucent oval. The next thing we need to do is move the shirt hole up so that it's around this area here. So let's write our move command and let's try moving it to 0, 35. Now let's click compile. As we can see, we have an oval that's been subtracted from this part of our shirt and now our shirt has a neck hole. Time for challenge number two. Use the subtract tool to make the moon from challenge number one into a crescent shape. Pause the video now and come back once you've attempted the challenge so that we can go over the solution and the next part of the lesson. Here's how I did it. I went back to my code from challenge number one and then I went to where I called my moon group. I clicked enter and then wrote subtract. Then I had to specify the shape that I wanted to subtract from my moon. I chose a circle with a radius of 40. Then I wrote ghost. And then the last thing I had to do was move my circle over so that I wouldn't erase my entire moon, but just a portion of it. So I moved the circle that I was gonna subtract from my moon to a point of 30 comma zero. Then I clicked compile and got my crescent shaped moon. Now let's move on to the last and final part of our lesson today. We want to learn how to create a type of repetitive motion. In lesson three, we learned how to create one type of repetitive motion. Let's do a quick review. We could write something like circle 10 filled red, and then we could move it with a combination of sine and cosine and model.time. So here we've decided to use a combination of sine and model.time. As a quick review, the number that we multiply sine by corresponds to the span of movement, and the number that we multiply model.time by, in this case it's one, corresponds to how fast the movement is. So let's click compile and see how this looks. This motion is repetitive. However, today we want to learn a technique which will allow us to create repetitive motion that doesn't bop back and forth like this. Instead, we want motion that starts at one side goes to the other side, and then restarts here. We can achieve that kind of repetitive motion by using one of our repeat functions, which are built into our animation slots. We have two repeat functions. The first is called repeat duration, and the second is called repeat distance. The two functions are pretty similar, but one might be more useful than the other in certain situations. For example, if you want a motion to repeat after a certain amount of time, you may choose to use the repeat duration function, and if you want your motion to repeat after a certain distance, you may choose to use the repeat distance function. When you want to use the function, all you have to do is write the function name, repeat duration, or repeat distance, followed by these four inputs before the equal sign. So for repeat duration, it must be followed by values for speed, duration, start position, and time. Our repeat distance function takes in the exact same inputs, except instead of a duration, we take a distance. So anytime you call the repeat distance function, it has to be followed by values for speed, distance, start position, and time. Now let's add a bunch more circles using our repeat functions to create an abstract piece of art. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a rectangle in the background so that our background isn't plain white. Next, let's add a circle that moves according to the repeat duration function. So for this circle, we'll give it a radius of 10, and then we'll fill it orange, and then we will move it in the x direction according to the repeat duration function. So I just have to write repeat duration, and then follow it by four inputs for speed, duration, start position, and time in that order. So for speed, I'll do negative 10, for duration, I'll do 10. For start position, I will do negative 50. And then for time, I will do model.time. In the y direction, I will keep it at a stationary position of 20. 
and let's click compile now to see how that looks. So I think that looks pretty cool, so I'm going to leave it. If you weren't happy with how your circle was moving, you can always experiment with these numbers because there's an infinite number of possibilities for movement given that we have four different inputs. Let's add a third circle now, but this time we will move it in the x direction according to the repeat distance function. So again, I will have a circle with a radius of 10. This time, I will fill it yellow. And then write move. And this time, I am using the repeat distance function, so I'm just going to write repeat distance. And then I need to follow it with four inputs, including speed, distance, start position, and time in that order. If you ever can't remember what the inputs should be, you can always look down here. Before the equal sign, we'll have all of the inputs you need in the order that you need them to be in. So here, for speed, distance, start position, and time, I will use negative 20, 80, 50, and model.time. In the y direction, I will have my circle at a point of 20. Now let's click compile and see what this circle looks like. So I'm happy with that. For the next circle, let's use a repeat function to make the circle grow and then disappear and then grow again. So this time, instead of having a specified parameter, I'm going to use the repeat distance function. And I'm going to make sure that I have inputs for speed, distance, start position, and time. So I'll use 20, 20, 0, and model.time. Then I just need to fill my circle with a color. So for this circle, I'll make it blue. Let's click compile and see what this looks like. So as you can see, the circle grows and then disappears and then grows again. It doesn't grow and then shrink and then grow. And that's because we used a repeat function instead of using sine and cosine with model.time. Let's add one more circle into our abstract piece. So for this circle, we will give it a radius of 4, and then when we fill it, we will fill it according to HSL and the repeat distance function. So I'll write repeat distance, and this time I will use numbers 360, 360, 0, and model.time. So this can be my value for H. For my saturation, I will use 1, and for my lightness, I will use 0 0.5. Then I'm going to close my bracket and then click compile. And now I have my finished piece of art. That's the end of lesson five. Now we have a final challenge to complete. Use clipping, subtracting, and the repeat functions in an animation slot creation. Remember to get help from the mentors if you need it. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video.